Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Breakers Creations and today I'm going to be reviewing the SCSI 2SD SCSI hard drive emulator. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell if you want to receive notifications. The SCSI 2SD is a SCSI hard drive emulator. If you don't know what a SCSI hard drive is, this video is probably not for you. SCSI, or SCSI, stands for Small Computer System Interface, and is an interface used by some computers for connecting peripherals, such as hard drives, scanners, CD-ROMs, tape drives, and probably uh, other things I can't think of right now. Apple Computer used SCSI for its Macintosh computers from the Mac Plus in 1986, all the way to its Beige G3s, which were discontinued in 1999. Even though some of these later computers started using IDE for the internal drives, they still had a SCSI bus that allowed you to connect external SCSI peripherals. When the Mac started getting all round and colourful, SCSI was completely replaced by IDE for internal hard drives and USB and Firewire for external devices. Apple wasn't the only company that adopted the SCSI standard, but they were arguably the biggest. This review is based very much on using the SCSI to SD in a vintage Apple Mac computer. I'm a collector of vintage Mac computers and the SCSI hard drives present a problem if you want to keep the computers operational. The hard drives from these vintage Macs are getting very old and most are starting to fail. But when it comes to replacing them, no one is making new ones. So the only thing you can do is try and hunt down some old working SCSI hard drives, but they're destined to fail in the not too distant future anyway. So here's where the SCSI to SD comes in and saves the day. It allows you to use a modern SD card as your computer's hard drive. This also allows you to take advantage of the huge advancements made in cost versus capacity of mass storage. Here's a 40 megabyte hard drive. In the late 80s, this would have set you back a couple of thousand dollars here in Australia. And here's a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. This is 16,000 megabytes or 400 times the capacity of this old 40 megabyte hard drive. And it cost me less than $10. From what I can tell, the SCSI to SD has been available since around 2013 and has gone through a number of revisions, each time adding some new functionality and features. I've used a SCSI to SD version 3, version 5, version 5.1, version 5.5 and version 6. So I feel like I've had a fairly broad exposure to the product and to be honest, all of them will work quite well in these vintage Macs. The SCSI to SD is the brainchild of Michael McMaster from sunny Queensland here in Australia. We're not world renowned for our electronics manufacturing here, so even though the SCSI 2SD is an Australian invention, they're manufactured in China. In this video, I'm only focusing on the SCSI 2SDs that are available to buy today, which are the version 5, version 5.1, version 5.5 and version 6. You'll find the version 5 on eBay and it looks like this. It's quite narrow and these mounting holes are the same width as a 3.5 inch hard drive. It has a micro SD card slot and a full-sized Molex power connector. The version 5.1 are sometimes available directly from Michael McMaster's company, CodeSource. They are also available from the US reseller Inertial Computing. Unfortunately for us here in Australia, buying them from Inertial costs an absolute packet once you account for the exchange rates and delivery, but it's quite a good price if you're buying in the US. The 5.1 mounting holes are in the same position as a 2.5 inch hard drive, though the board is closer in width to that of a 3.5 inch hard drive. It has a full sized SD card slot and a smaller Berg power connector. It also has the option to add a surface mount D sub connector if you want to use the drive externally. The version 6 is pretty much the same as the 5.1 but adds some extra features such as synchronous transfers and access to the data on the SD card via USB. It also has a full size SD card slot and the Berg power connector. The version 6 doesn't have the option for the D-sub connector. The 5.5 is very different to the others and is designed specifically as an external device. This one is extremely useful if you're doing lots of work with old Macs, but I'll focus on this one a bit later on. There is also a PowerBook edition of the SCSI 2SD, but I've never used one. The main difference is that it has the same connector as those found in the early 2.5 inch SCSI hard drives found in Apple PowerBook laptops. All of the models I'll be covering share the same basic functionality. 
They allow you to simulate one or more SCSI hard drives of any size as long as it's the same or less than the SD card installed. So if I wanted to create an exact replica of this 40 megabyte quantum hard drive, I could do that. I could set the drive capacity at 40 megabytes and program the specifics so that a Macintosh computer will think there's a 40 megabyte quantum hard drive installed. And you're not just limited to one drive either. You can create up to four separate hard drives on a single SCSI to SD, each with their own settings and SCSI ID. SCSI hard drives need to be assigned a unique ID from 0 to 6. On external hard drives, this was usually done with a little selector switch. And internal drives were usually configured with jumpers. The SCSI to SD will allow you to configure the ID via software. In terms of speed performance, the SCSI to SD is comparable to a real SCSI drive. In some areas it's quicker, and in other areas it's slower than a SCSI drive. On the whole, it's probably about the same, so don't expect some sort of massive speed boost when you install a SCSI to SD. So let's look at each model individually. Starting at the top, we have the SCSI to SD version 6. The two main features in the version 6 that aren't found in any other SCSI to SD model are the synchronous transfer and the ability to access the SD card content via the USB cable. Synchronous transfer is faster than asynchronous, but the vintage Macs don't support it, so this doesn't really have much value to me. Accessing the SD card via USB is a nice option, but the alternative is to take out the SD card and physically plug it into your computer, and I guess that's not terribly difficult. One of the things I don't like about the version 6 is the size. What I'm holding here is actually a version 5.1 SCSI to SD, but it's the same size as a version 6. If you're using it to replace a 3.5 inch SCSI drive, the mounting holes on the board aren't in the right position to attach it directly to a Mac mounting bracket. This means it's necessary to use some sort of 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch mounting bracket. CodeSource do sell a mounting bracket, but I actually picked up this cheap one on eBay for a couple of dollars, and using a couple of standoffs, I've securely mounted the drive to the bracket. The only issue is that the back of the bracket covers the SD card and the USB slots, so I've used a Dremel to cut a gap in the plastic. It's not perfect, but it works. The version 6 also has this small Berg connector for power. For the most part, you don't really need to use this connector, as the SCSI to SD can usually get enough power to operate directly from the SCSI bus, so there's no need to connect additional power. The one exception I've found was when I put one of these into an external case, it didn't get enough power from the SCSI bus to operate. So I created a little adapter to power it from the standard Molex power plug in the external drive case. If you need one, you will find Molex to Berg adapters are readily available on eBay. If you decide to make your own adapter, you only need to wire up 5 volts to the SCSI to SD, which is typically the red cable. A SCSI to SD doesn't use 12 volts. Be sure not to accidentally send 12 volts to 5 volts on the SCSI to SD, as it will kill it. Another thing the version 6 has is a full-sized SD card slot. It might seem more logical to use a micro SD slot, but there's a very good reason for it being this way. There are quite a few SD card extenders available for full-size cards. These allow you to effectively create a remote SD card slot that you can have on the outside of your computer. This allows you to remove the SD card without the need to open up your computer. For people that might be wanting to copy files to their vintage Mac via the SD card, this could be a very useful feature. Probably the last feature I'll mention is the ability to enable and disable termination via software. When working with SCSI, the theory is that the first and last devices in the physical chain should be terminated, while the ones in the middle of the chain shouldn't be terminated. All the hard drives like this were terminated with resistors that could be removed. Later drives could have the termination enabled or disabled using jumpers. The version 6 SCSI to SD can be terminated via software in the same way that you can configure the different SCSI IDs. I'll cover this process a little later on. The SCSI to SD version 5.1 is the same size as the version 6, so I have the same issues with the difficulty in mounting. It also has the same Berg power connector and full-size SD card slot. The version 5.1 does not do synchronous transfers and doesn't allow you to access the SD contents when you plug in the USB. So if you want to read the SD card in another computer, you need to physically remove it and plug it into that computer.
Another thing the version 5.1 has is this space to add a surface mount 25 pin D sub connector, which would allow you to use it as an external drive. However, the SCSI 2SD version 5.5 is a much better candidate for this purpose. This is the SCSI 2SD version 5. As you can see, this one looks quite different. It has a micro SD slot, a full sized Molex power connector, is the same width as a 3.5 inch hard drive, and has the mounting holes in the same position as a 3.5 inch hard drive. One important feature missing from the version 5 is a software configurable termination. If you want to disable termination on this drive, you have to do it the old fashioned way by removing these termination resistors. Apart from this, the functionality is pretty much the same as the others. Apparently it starts up a little slower than the version 5.1, which can present some issues on some models of computer, but not with Macs. I've never encountered any problems with these on any of the Macs I've tried. So for me, this is the model of choice. I really like the way it can easily be mounted on the same bracket used for a three and a half inch drive, either by using standoffs, if it's a bracket that mounts at the bottom, such as the Mac 2 CI, or by using some sort of right angle device if it's a bracket that mounts at the sides, such as the old Compact Max. It's small enough and light enough that it only needs the two screws to hold it secure. This one is very purpose specific and comes as a standalone item with a plastic case. The case has been 3D printed and not particularly well, but it is quite sturdy and serves its purpose. The version 5.5 is designed to be used only as an external drive and can plug straight into the external SCSI port. It uses a micro SD slot like the version 5, but it has software configurable SCSI termination, the same as the version 5.1. As you can see, it's much smaller than any of the others. I work with lots of old Macs, so I really love this one. I have it set up with a bootable system 7.1 partition, loaded up with all the different system enablers that will allow me to boot on any Mac from the SE all the way up to the early Quadras. Basically any computer that will run System 7.1. I also have it loaded up with system installers, drive formatters and utilities so that I can boot from the SCSI to SD, run checks on the computer, format the internal hard drive and install an OS. I haven't been able to get this to run on a Mac Plus, but I generally recommend the floppy emu made by Big Mess of Wires for the Plus anyway. Obviously this could be loaded up with system 7.5, 8 or 9, depending on your specific needs. As much as I like this device, it's not perfect. Within only a couple of uses, this shield from the D sub connector fell off. I'll be able to rig up something to permanently attach it, but it was a little disappointing, especially after happening so quickly. The other issue relates to this bit of plastic at the bottom. It juts out enough to stop the drive from being plugged into quite a few Macs. For example, the Mac 2 CI has this little lip at the bottom of the case, and that plastic stops the drive from being plugged in. Once again, I can resolve this by shaving off a few millimetres from the bottom case plastic of the SCSI to SD, but it's another thing that probably could have been made differently. On the whole though, I love this device. Despite its flaws, it's an incredibly useful piece of kit. Last of all, I'd like to take a quick look at the software used for configuring the SCSI to SD. I'll only be focusing on the Mac version, but it is available on Mac, Windows and Linux flavors. I've included the download links in the video description, but they can be found on the code source SCSI to SD wiki. There is one version of the SCSI to SD utility for the version 6 drive and another version for the others. Make sure you download the right one for your SCSI to SD. When you launch the SCSI to SD utility on the Mac, it launches the terminal and then opens up the graphical user interface. It's a bit clunky, but it's functional. There's no included documentation, but if you hover your mouse over any of the options, a brief description will pop up. Clearly, the Enable SCSI Terminator is fairly obvious, as I've discussed this already. These items about speed and startup delays are required for working with specific computers, but with any of the Macs newer than a Mac Plus, you shouldn't need to change these. Within each of the device tabs, you can set the SCSI ID you want to use and how big the drive will be. If you plan to set the SCSI to SD up with more than one drive, I recommend checking the auto checkbox. This will ensure that you don't accidentally overlap the drives 
onto the same sectors of the SD card. You also have the option to set the vendor and product ID, which allows you to create a drive that mimics a real drive. For example, I can make a SCSI to SD virtual drive that will appear to be a Quantum Pro drive to the computer, even though it's not. This can be useful if you want to format your drive using Apple's HDSC utility, which will only allow you to format particular drives. In my opinion, it's far easier just to leave these settings as they are and use a drive formatting utility that will allow you to format any drive type. I would recommend Hard Disk Toolkit, Lido, or you can get hold of the modified Apple HDSC utility that removes the drive limitations. Keep in mind that if you're using a system older than 7.5.3, you will have a 2GB partition size limit. So if you create a drive larger than 2GB, it will need to be divided up into multiple partitions using your drive formatting software. Once you have the settings you want, you can plug in your SCSI to SD via the USB port and then save these settings to the device. If you're modifying an existing SCSI to SD, you can plug it in, load the settings already on the device, make any modifications and then save the new settings. The SCSI to SD utility can also be used to update the firmware of your SCSI to SD. Firmware updates can also be downloaded from the CodeSource website. So in summary, I think the SCSI to SD is a great little device. I do have a few minor complaints, but they are probably a bit Mac-centric. This is a device designed to be used in lots of different computer models, not just Macs. So some of my issues are a bit selfish. Another complaint I have relates to the high cost of buying one here in Australia. But apparently the market here is so small, it's just not worth the trouble of importing large quantities and selling them directly to Australians. That's why we have to buy them from overseas. So, do you have a SCSI to SD? If so, what are your thoughts? Or are you thinking of buying one and still have some questions? Please leave them in the comments section. I should also mention that if you need some help getting your SCSI to SD up and running, I can provide pre-configured units all ready to just drop into your vintage Mac. Thanks for watching.